chosen. Chosen. Clap your hands unto God of the chosen. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. This journey started in the year 2010 when I was pregnant of my child. I, I discovered a strange character from my husband that he started removing things from the house. We are living together as husband and wife. Suddenly, he started removing his things one after the other until he finally removed all his things. And I was left alone with the pregnancy. I was there, nobody to care. So when it was time for me to deliver in 2010, so I have to, I, I left my former station. I came down to Benin because I'm from Benin, Edo State. So when I came, by the grace of God, June 2nd, I delivered that child I was pregnant of. So the, my husband never called. He never even found out to know where I was with the baby. So it was when I delivered, he now sent the names for the naming ceremony. After that, there was no call, nothing. He did not even call. He just sent the name for the naming ceremony. So that was how we were on. I was going on. I wasn't, I wasn't a choosing. I don't even know anything about choosing. So I was just moving on. When it was two years, in 2012, when that my child was very sick, he was very, very sick, and I took him to the hospital. When I take him to the hospital, coming back to the house, he will be sick again. If I take him to the hospital, he will be sick again. Until one day, when I took him to the hospital, in the mid, uh, it was at midnight, around between one and two, the temperature was very high. And I took it to the hospital, the doctors there and the nurses, they ministered drugs for him. So after some time, they asked us to go, that they have given what they are supposed to give. They prescribed drugs, of which by the grace of God, we were able to buy the drugs. And we went home, we gave to this child. The temperature was still rising. It still was still increasing. I said, what am I going to do? Nobody to call at that midnight. Everywhere was silence. So I said, okay, let me just be watching to see what is going to happen. So I had to lay that child on the bed. So there was light. And my mind was just telling me I should uh, switch on my television. That time, I don't know anything, whether there was choosing or not, I don't even know. So as I was searching on the telly, I was searching, I was just searching. I just got to a particular station where I saw people wearing this choosing apron. And they were dancing choruses as they were singing choruses here. People were singing choruses, they were dancing, dancing. So my baby that was lying lifeless on the bed, as soon as he looked at that television, saw the way people were dancing, he jumped out from the bed. He started with papas, I want him only papas. He started dancing, he started dancing. He uh -huh. was pointing at the television. He was pointing at that television. Wow. He was dancing, dancing, dancing. Somebody that he was, in fact, he was just lying down lifeless. There was no life for him. I was just looking at him. I said, God, where will I take this child to this night? That was how the boy danced and danced and danced and danced. Until the sickness, the temperature, everything calmed down. Hey! Chosen, praise the Lord. Clap your hands on the God of the chosen. The God of chosen is so great. He is so great. So after the choruses, I've never seen this apron before in my life. That was that night was my first time. I've never heard anything about choosing in my life. So after the choruses, my daddy Joe came home. He started preaching. My son jumped again, started pointing. He was pointing at Daddy Joe. He was just pointing at Daddy Joe. He was pointing, pointing. I was looking at what he, what he was doing. That time life came full. Food, he was looking for food. Everything, he, the body was calm. The body was okay. Every sickness, everything disappeared. Hey! Chosen, praise the Lord. Clap your hands on the God of the chosen. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when, the, when they were showing uh, uh, those things on the telly, I saw the, on the screen the address of the church was coming, was just coming out, coming out one after the other. I went and took a biro and paper. I wrote the address of the church. When I wrote the address of the church, I said, this church, I must look for this church. So on Sunday, 
I dressed him, we all dressed out. We started looking for the church. So when I went out, I went to the one church. I went reaching there, the, the, there was nobody put on this apron I saw on television. I said, this is not the church. I left that place. So with the address, I went to, I didn't know that the, this very church, this choosing, was at the back of the church I was into, the church I went. So I now went to another side. Somebody now directed me with the address again. I came back to that area, Akube, in Edo State. That's our, the Lost Choosing Charismatic Revival Ministry headquarters, Edo State. So when I came back to that place, and I saw members with this apron, I said, this is the, uh, the, the, the people I saw. These are the people I saw on television. Hey, hey, hey. These are the people I saw. God so, chosen, Baba. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As soon as, I, uh, as soon as my son came down in the church, that was how he started playing. He started dancing again inside the church. They were not playing music this time around again. He was very, very free. The, in fact, every, he was so happy. That was how God was choosing. Brought me and that child to choosing. Hey. And to the, to the glory Clap of God. Clap your hands unto God of the chosen. Chosen, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So that was how we all came to a chosen. And to the glory of God, we remain a chosen till today. Amen. And uh, that you should know that I wasn't a chosen. And there was, there was nothing that brought me to choosing. So when I started coming, started coming, our daddy Joe, when he's preaching, we say continuation brings freedom. Correct. I started, I continued. When he's preaching, he will be preaching, we get to a particular place when he's preaching salvation message. In Matthew chapter 19 from verse 4, he said in the, begin, in the beginning, uh, that's, he, he will lay more emphasis on that particular uh, uh, salvation message. He will go to, that's verse 6, he will say, what God has joined together, let no man put asunder. I said, ah, my husband married me as a wife. He married me legally. He did not just see me by the roadside and picked me and put in his house. But this word of mess, this word of God I'm hearing, I think this word of God is the word I need. Because even if I'm distracted in other things, but when it comes to that salvation message, when our daddy Joe is preaching the salvation message, the angels of God will just come and open my two ears. The message will be sinking into my ear. The, that is, it will seem as if I'm eating fruit. Because people, my family members, they were even tired. They were saying, ah, this man, your husband married you. And he said he's not going to marry again. That if that you, two of you are having problems and nobody can sort, settle the matter. And over his dead body, he will never come to you again. Over his dead body, he will not marry you again. Why not just go and marry another, you know? Well, why not enjoy yourself? Why not go and marry another man that will be able to take proper care of you? So when I will come to church, the way that what the Jew will be emphasizing on the salvation message, I say this is the problem I'm passing through. And that the Jew is always emphasizing on this thing. That the first man in your life that married you and paid your bride price, that is your husband until death do you part. That as far as the man is still alive, that you don't have any right to go and marry another man. As far as you are still alive, the man does not have right to go and marry another woman. I said, my husband paid my bride price, oh, he married me. My marriage was talk of the town. I cannot go, since God has said it, I cannot go beyond the word of God. So I was going on, moving on. So our pastors in the church, when they would come, our national pastor, when he came, in fact, God really used him as my father. I will meet him, daddy pray for me, look at what is going on. He will say, my daughter, what you need to do, follow this God, bomba to bomba. Follow this God in truth and in spirit, in holiness and righteousness. At the appointed time that he knows that he will grant you your heart desire, this God of choosing will do it for you. Don't be distracted, don't be deceived. I heard unto that word, and God was always helping me. And anytime we come to a crusade, in fact, God was always using most of our, majority of the pastors that came to Edo State at that period, they were all coming because of me. God really used them for me. And when we come to, when we come to a crusade like this, our daddy Joe will say, we say, I will hear your testimony. That's so right. the, in fact, to cut the long story short, because of time, it, last year, August 2022, I just saw my husband, he came. 
So he came to me because I left my former station. I worked my transfer to Benin. So he just came to Benin. And when I saw him, I said, ah, this man said uh, over his dead body will not come. What has happened? So um, when I saw him, I welcomed him. I took him to the house. When he just entered the house, he just he, he wants to go and rest. He just went to the bed and lie down, started sleeping. Uh -uh. He was just sleeping. <laughs> just like that. <laughs> Just hey, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. He said that oh, the first thing he did was that he wants to have his bed. So he just entered bedroom, pour water on his body, enter bed. He started sleeping and sleeping and sleeping. Ah. I said, today is Sunday. Me, I'm going back to the church. Oh. As he was sleeping on the bed, I went back to the church for service to continue. When we now close the service, I came back to the house. I met him sleeping. He was still sleeping. He slept and slept and slept. So when that day, he said, so, so time that he's going. So when it was that time, the daughter went and waiting. He got up. He was still dozing. I said, whether you are dozing or not, you have to go. He, he, but after everything, he now dressed up and moved. So when he left, he, could, he couldn't have his peace again. He started calling. He said, you are putting me, I are putting me in trouble now. Look at what I've done to him. That he has gone, he has involved himself. That uh, pastors, he has been going to many places. That pastors have been telling him to come back to me. That without him coming back to me, he will not have peace. That he had to come back. So he had to come back again. So when he came back, this one, he had to spend, he, he spent time with us. I think he spent up to one week. And by the grace of God, that was the time I went to our headquarters to go and also give this testimony. That, that is to tell you that the marriage that was broken for complete 12 years. Uh? The marriage, my marriage was broken, we separated for good 12 years. And this God of choosing today has reconciled my husband and myself. He has united the family. Yay. And I'm here to give this God of choosing all the glory, all the honor, all the adoration. My daddy Joe said he will hear my testimony. Yes. That is why I have come for this crusade. Yes. For my daddy Joe to hear this testimony. Yes. That my husband that left me for good 12 years. He has returned back to me. Hallelujah. He is now my husband. Hallelujah. I am now living as a woman that is as a married woman. Chosen Amen. praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to really appreciate this God. Even that my son that, uh, that took me to choosing, that was sick, by the grace of God, he was the one that led the children, that, the one that conducted, uh, conducted, conducted the children for children choir today. It's now 12 years. Uh -huh. So this, this God of choosing has been using him very well in the ministry. All my children, by the grace of God, we are all working with, the, with this God of choosing in truth and in spirit, in holiness and righteousness. I want to appreciate this God. If you are here as a married woman and your marriage has been broken for 10 years, no matter how many years, just be patient. My daddy Gio that has heard my testimony today, we hear your testimony in the mighty name of Jesus Amen. Christ. Amen. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. There is nothing this God cannot do. Just be patient and he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Amen. It's just because of time, I have a lot of testimonies. If I want to give testimony here today, we will not leave. Mm. But because of time, I want to pray for my dad in the Lord, heaven at last. And Amen. I pray that God should continue to strengthen him. Amen. That God should give him more grace to fulfill this 10 billion so mandate. That Amen. God should give him the grace to carry this ministry forward. And Amen. God should give him the grace to make heaven at last. Amen. I pray for my mom in the Lord. Who, my, who this God is using to support my dad in the Lord in this ministry. I pray for the power of God upon her. I pray for more strength. I pray for more grace upon my, my, my mom in the Lord. She will never be tired. She will, never be, she will never be weak in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I pray everyone at last for my mom in the Lord in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. I cover my testimony with the blood of Jesus blood Christ. Of Jesus. I cover each of every one of us with the blood of Jesus. I cover my husband with the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of and Jesus. I cover my marriage with the blood of Jesus Christ. Blood of Jesus. Chosen praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a sweet testimony. Let's clap our hands on the God of the choosing. Thank you, Father. 